I'm Hunter. I'm Rebecca. I'm Caitlin. I'm Nessa. This is The Bradley Show! That was so happy. Yay. <laughs> I like that. Hello. Welcome to a live top 10. It's top 10 Tuesday. It's like taco Tuesday, but better. Ooh, tacos and board game Tuesday. Let's do that. Let's do that guys. Hope you have your tacos. Hope you have your board games. We got a top 10 for you. It's greatness. Sorry we're late. Our computer hates us. Typical. I think it was over, I guess. I, I actually was surprised you put such a nice opening because I was going to put, if I was doing the opening, it would have been 2020 with the explosions and dumpster fires and stuff. But you, you know what? Thinking of board games from 2020. I'm trying to think positive here. Actually, I was going to say, if you're thinking about the board games from 2020, they're really awesome. Just saying. Just saying. All right. Amazing. Can't... These are a good list. Yeah, this is, it's, it's funny. We've been doing this, I don't know how many years now. Four years, five years, something like that. We're old. We don't remember these things. Top ten of the year. Yeah. And uh, I think our first top ten of the year was on Board Game Breakfast. But anyway, I mean, uh, Board Game Blender. Maybe. Anyway, this is, I think this is the toughest year I had. To pick a top ten? Not not, not picking a top ten, ordering the top ten. Yeah. I can see that. She asked me about it earlier and I said, my nine and ten are pretty, pretty solid. My one and two is pretty solid. But three through eight, you could just randomize them they're all well they're all amazing for different reasons and i can't go i like this game because of this and i like this game because of that and it's really i, I just so what I, so what i did being the math person that i did just tell you how i made my list so i, I got now i narrowed it down to my 10 games okay i took those 10 games put them in pub meeple <laughs> you actually went that far and i did it five times and then averaged the answers wow <laughs> I should have done that. And what's funny is my list, every, every, all five lists that I did were different. Oh, I believe it. Just based on what got compared to what. I, I, yeah, because, okay, I'll be honest. So I did 10, way too much work for this top ten. Well, yeah, I, and I felt like this top ten, like I feel like my top ten is pretty good. But the numbers, where they lie in that ten, they could probably switch around yeah. for the most part. Yeah, these are all. Just the whole ten. I, every ten, all, all ten, I can say this now, spoilers. All 10 of my top 10 will be on my top 100 next year. Wow. That's All these games will make my top 100. That's amazing. I will say, I'm not going to go that crazy, but I will say that every game that we played, I liked so much that it was on my short list. That's what took so long right. for me. Because every single game I played that was a 2020 this year was so good, I was like, it's got to be on my short list. We were very, very, very selective on what we bought. So the, yeah, one, the well, ones that we did get, right? the, the ones we did get were, like, were amazing psh, games. Yeah, so. so I think, and I would like to talk with you guys afterwards too about the ones that weren't on our top 10 because I know that you guys have probably played some that we haven't yet that you're like, ooh, you need to play this. And yeah, I always several, I like to get the There's several the big name ones that we didn't play. For that, but, so. but it is what it is. Yeah. All right. Let's get you wanna get it started? Me? No. What? It could be twenty twenty one. We could switch it back because I used to go you know, Oh, we're gonna go, switch it back. No, huh? no, no, I didn't organize it that way. <laughs> I was like, we didn't set it up that right, way. I keep messing with the camera because I didn't have time to adjust it before we started because I was messing with the computer. You're all fidgety. You moved it off. You moved off frame again. Well, yeah, there's two. <laughs> I'm like, I might have to set like on the corner for me to, to see me. So I'm going to move it a little bit. Zara said, yet yeah, something north of 20, 2020 games. See, and I feel like with a pandemic year that I'd say that that's pretty Not much good, better. right? Because yeah, we didn't play. Like, we didn't play any games that require. Three or more players. Yeah, we couldn't. The whole so, year. So I feel like it missed... Yeah, because the very beginning of the year... It, well, yeah, none that require it. There's a lot that I want to play multiplayer. But yeah, you're right. It was... It's really hard to imagine that the Dice Tower Cruise was actually in 2020. Yes. And we actually went on that. And looking back at everything, I'm like, wow, we really lucked out. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's just... It's funny because that was really our... That and there was one... Didn't we go to one convention? West Texas. West Texas. No, no. It was uh, FalseCon. A FalseCon. Yeah, it was And False West Texas Oh, yeah. Con. They, they did squeeze those we in before. We had all three all... of those before. 
Yeah, so a couple of smaller cons before everything went down, but even then we mostly played smaller games. We didn't play any big party right. games or anything. Right. So it's like, and it's so early in the year, a lot of those games hadn't come out. I don't know, it's just, you take the opportunities you can, right? So it's going to be kind of selective on the variety of games that we have, but the the quality is quite superior, I think. All right, it, let's do it. Good games. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost exactly a year ago. That's right, Zerus. Yikes. Crazy, huh? All right, let's start it off. Crazy. My number 10. Number yes, 10. Pandemic is cramping our gaming styles. You are correct, Kabuki. My 10, Pan Am. I knew this was going to be on your list. Pan Am. This tells you the quality of, of this list because I love, love, love Pan Am, and it's my number 10. Um, one caveat, I'm going to go ahead and jump in. She may not have made the same caveat, but I made this caveat. We have not finished Pandemic Legacy Season oh, Zero yet. I did not put it on the that list. That would be in my that... top ten, but I don't want to give it a rating until I finish because most Legacy games, you rate them on basically, obviously, the experience with how they end. So anyway, back to Pan Am. So Pan Am is an awesome game. It has all these uh, mechanisms I love in games. It's got route building. It's got worker placement. It's got uh, all kinds of all kinds of fun stuff. You're, built, you're basically you're a small local airline. You're uh, building routes. You're building routes across the the, the globe. Um, you're upgrading your planes. You're getting special powers. You're doing all sorts of cool stuff. You're, you're getting right, right, rights to different routes, and you kind of, as time goes by, Pan Am starts out and they start just swallowing up all these 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 routes. They get bigger and bigger and bigger, and so it's kind of a, a, a good good decision point of do I sell my route to Pan Am or do I do I avoid getting bought out by Pan Am because you need the cash. You need an influx of cash to keep playing the game, so you have to sell off routes periodically. But then you lose the the the, the stuff that that route gives you, right? So it's got a really cool a decision making in the game. I love it. It's an awesome game. Very right cool. Now. It's a good one. Very good one. Hmm. Not surprised that this is on your <laughs> list, actually. Uh, no, it was neat, and it, I think what was fun about that game too is I learned a whole lot about it because like I knew about Pan Am distantly. But didn't know like how their company run and stuff, and so we were talking about that, and I thought that was pretty cool. Right. Um, so what's your number ten? My number ten is Latin, Latin, Latin. It's Alma Mater. I know you're all surprised, right? <laughs> this is a really cool game. This fits my my shtick of really pretty bright vibrant art it's got that magical 90 ish minutes play time it's got a mixed bag of, of of those mechanisms that we really like um and the engine building up of your resources and stuff in this like well i i say engine building is kind of weird you have like this balance of professors and students and books until i mean you are going through the books which, you know, as a reader, I, I did appreciate that quite a bit, actually. Because, I mean, it was all about those books, right. which are fun. And they're gimmicky, cute little plastic books. I loved that. That was cute, too. But um, it was a very thinky game. I really enjoyed that it was heavier than I expected it to be. Right. But it was really fun. It was really enjoyable. The theme's fun and a little bit different than what you're used to seeing. Alma Mater is a good one. I like it. Yeah, I, f I figured this would be on your list because you just fell in love with the books when we did we did actually did a live <laughs> unboxing of it and you like freaked out because of the books yeah it's really cool it's a really nice uh engine building game first mm -hmm. first part of the game you're really not doing much but towards the end it really cranks up you get all these special powers and discounts and and little characters that give you skills and it's really it's a it's a really solid game well and it's so tight with the the book currency because man you've right. got to figure it out or you kind of have this drought for a little while and you're going right. i can't get this stuff. I need to build up an engine to get those books. Right. And it's it's very tight because the with the two player you have like a little ghost player person so you have enough different types of books because you need each other's books as well. Right. And so um, we're constantly going to the ghost player like dude make more books. <laughs> you know? It was just it was so funny because we're like please right. We're waiting for him to make more books. I need his books. And the, and, and, the, and the ghost player wasn't that hard. You just no, flip over it a card. It was you nice. flip over a card. It blocks some spots on the board. It's a worker placement game. And it uh, tells you how many books it produces. So it, it's it's really cool because you're going up this track, this this track of which book is the most prestigious. And as as that fluctuates, assuming that people are, are passing each other on the track, some books are more valuable than other books, right? So yeah. it's interesting. If you want your books to be most valuable, then you have to move up that track. So you're yeah. foregoing doing other things. 
to do that to make your book. It's it's really it's a cool game. That's a really good game. It's a uh, it's about it's I think it's from the same people that made Coimbra, and we love that game. So I was say the art style is very similar, which I love. So all right, it's a good one. My number nine is Beyond the Sun. I think we'll be talking about this one a little bit later. I suspect. Um, Beyond the Sun, it's awesome. It's a it's also obviously space theme game. It's uh, it's like Tech Tree the game. So yes. So in a lot of games, in a lot of uh, these kind of space games, you have all kinds of stuff going on. You're doing exploring. You're going over the map. You're fighting other people. You're doing all these things. And the Tech Tree is kind of a side thing that you're doing, right? You're building up different technologies and becoming more powerful. This one flips it on its head. The Tech Tree is the game. And the side stuff is the exploration and taking over colonies and stuff like that, which is a really interesting way way to do that. So the whole game is focused around getting resources, getting the things you need to build your tech tree. And that's how you score. The majority of victory points are scored through getting further on this this tech tree. And uh, like I said, the the space, the exploration part is kind of a side, a side thing on the game, which is really cool. It's an interesting way to do that. I wonder, almost, I wonder if you could do that with different aspects of space games. Just taking one aspect, pulling it out, Ooh. making it the focus, and then the rest of the games decide. To Ooh. It. So it's and then take it like they did Century. I think it's yeah, Century, and then make it so you could combine it all together into <laughs> one big mega game, and then you have like the equivalent of Twilight Imperium when you have the final product. Yeah, yeah. It's, Somebody it's, get on that. It's very, very interesting. Yeah, if you really, it's really puzzly. It's very. Um, a lot of resource management of figuring, okay, if I need this tech to get this tech, to, I need these two techs to get this further tech, and it's it's really it's really really cool game. I enjoyed mm-hmm. it quite a bit. Um, p- but part of me, the reason it's lower on the list, um, not higher up, is part of me wants a more robust that side piece. I wanted to be I more, can see that. I wanted to be a little more robust than what it is. But my my stick with this would be the art. <laughs> Because I get that it's a tech tree and that it's this, but it is so stark. Like, there's almost an absence of art, period, yeah. to this game. And yeah. I'm like, you could make this a gorgeous game and make it this awesome. But I, I think they did that. I think they did. To keep on, the cost down. No, I or? think they did on purpose to make it look like a research situation, right? It's very utilitarian, very, uh, I think that's, I think it's intentional to do it that way. Okay, but I, I I agree. It's a I think it's a poor design choice, but I think that the the, I, I the get aesthetic it, they're going for is can, that kind of you can make spreadsheety. But you can make a clean look without. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Just saying. What's your number nine? My number nine. I've seen some buzz already in the chat about this one, and that is the Lost Ruins of Arnak. This game is growing on me. Just thinking about it i love this game i it was i think partly because it surprised me it was a much deeper game than i expected it to be it was much heavier than i expected it to be and i really loved the way it worked we started out with stuff and this game took ramping up to a whole new level because at first i really didn't think we were going to get that crazy about it because we're like with two player there's it's so difficult to explore the new area areas and it costs so much and in resources it's almost better to Expect somebody else to do that part, and then you go work your, you know, on your other side stuff and work up the chain, the ladder on the other side of the board. But um, so we each opened up some little things. Actually, you opened up one of the top row ones, I yeah. think, and I did a medium level one, and we just kind of bounced off of those that we had opened, and that worked for us. But now I really want to play a group game right. of it so that we can see how much more open the game gets because I suspect because everybody's going to be fighting for spaces so much we're going to be more inclined to open more because as you go and investigate these ruins you have to pay a bunch of resources to do that up front and then there's a guardian there that you have to fight to be able to finally get this stuff so it's like a kind of like a one-two punch um, that you have to prepare for so it takes a bit of time and it takes a bit of resources that you could be spending towards building your engine on other things right but those squares are so much they more valuable. Give you, They're yeah. so much more valuable. And in fact, now that we played, I, I think you want to try it differently. I, I want to go out and just open those up because they're, it's see. so. So when, if you go to these spaces, you open up these new worker placement spaces. They're more powerful and they're a little yeah. hard, they're a little more hard, they're a little harder to get to, but they're but much they the resources so are much, much better. But there's a monster guarding that place, and if you don't defeat the monster, you, you get sit there and... you get you get a like a cur- basically equivalent of a curse card. I think it's a fear card, which is a, a really crappy card. 
But there's so many ways to get rid of cards. You found a ton of ways to get rid of them. There's so many ways to get rid of the cards. I think it's almost worth going to those spots, eating that fear card to get the benefits that you go to. So I think I... Next next time we play it, I think I'll play it differently. But. Yeah. Oh, there's definitely things I want to try. And that's the other thing about that. I think there are a lot of different tactics and styles that we can use that'll be really fun um, in that game. There's a bunch of choices that you're making. Uh, you're doing an engine building, so you can choose kind of how to build your engine up to get your right. resources and stuff. It's, it's a really solid game. Um, and I can see why a lot of people got hyped about it because yeah. it lives up to it, I think. It's all right. So... It's all right, huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I agree, Corlew. Indiana Jones soundtrack playing while you played that. I would totally dig that. That's a great idea. All right, my That's number eight. We reached we reach the zone of it could be in any order. <laughs> oh, gosh. I believe you. My number eight. Let's see if I can Ooh. say this. Taiwan Tinsuyu. Taiwan? Taiwan. Taiwan Tinsuyu. Taiwan. Ta- ta- okay. Closer. Taiwan. Sure. Tensu you? I don't know. Yeah, the, yeah, probably. The Incan anyway. Empire. Uh, this is one of the tea games. Two tea games came out in 2021 from Turchi. Turchi? 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 I don't know. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. It's like CZ or something. It's got a very... T-U-R-Z-C-H-I, something like that. Yeah. Anyway. CZ, um, but yeah. It's, so this is, this is the latest Turchi. of the two, I believe. The most recent of the two. Um, this one is uh, a very interesting, <laughs> a very interesting, uh, uh, I guess, worker placement game. But it's really cool because when you when you put these uh, workers, if they're similar color workers in the same area, they all fire off. So it's you're trying to build clumps of similar workers to get lots of resources, and it's really it's really a cool game. It's got a lot going on. It's it's a heavy game, just like all the other the other two games uh, that the two. T games, there's, T Wakan, there's and there's three though, and the well, one one that shall not be named. Oh, oh, I see how it is. Woo, okay, <laughs> shall not be named. Well, will we'll be named later. Um, anyway, okay. um, I like this one. This one, uh, the reason it's a little lower than some of the other ones, uh, the reason I think it landed lower, is it's very puzzly. There's a lot of staring at the board and going, okay, I need these two resources. Where can I put a worker? To put it there, but then I don't want to pay the cost based on where you put it on the board and where your little little high priest is. You pay different resources, so it's like, where can I go to get this resource? There's a lot of thinking in this game. It's this a heavy game. It is a very very That's thinky a very game. Very heavy game. Um, this one, if you're prone to AP, the, you, this is not one. It's not a game you even want to look at. Right. It reminds me a lot of uh, Five Tribes and the fact there's so many choices, so many good choices that you just set and go. You have to just give up, okay, I need these two resources, I can get them there, and you kind of move on, because there is so many different ways to do it. Uh, but it's really cool, it's a, it's a heavy, if you like heavy Euros, it's 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 kind of unique, I like that. It it's almost reminds me of almost blo- exploding dice, that you get all these resources. Yeah! If, 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 you, if you plan properly, you can get all these resources. Well- and well, you can even... it? La Isla kind of does that too, right? I know you're like, I can see already in his eyes, La Isla. Nah. But you know what I'm saying? Like, it has the thing where it's the triangular positioning and all that kind of good stuff. So, thank you, Spider-Man. <laughs> Nobody knows who you are. I like Mary Anyway, Ghost. I love this game. If you love heavy Euros, good, you like puzzly heavy Euro games, um, thinky, they're really brain-burning heavy Euros, this is a good one. Yeah. I wouldn't say this one is... is, is Brain burning and, and like it's super super complicated and the rules are complicated. It's brain burning and, and figuring out best ways to navigate through the game to get the points you want. Right, right. There you Good go. Stuff. Good stuff. To one ten you. Ooh, I like it. Look at that. You go. <laughs> Were you walking around the house today doing that? I was. No, I wasn't. <laughs> just kidding. That'd be hilarious. What's your number eight? My number eight is probably higher on Hunter's list, I'm guessing, and that uh, is... You make a lot of assumptions. I do, and they're usually correct, though. <laughs> All right, so it's Dune Imperium. Um, again, this is one of those games where you don't really have to be, like, a super fan of the Dune universe or anything like that to enjoy it. The theme fits really nicely, though, I think. I think it works well. But at its heart, it's just... It's all about the cards and going through, and it's... Um, um, deck building, like worker placement magic. Yeah, I I wasn't sure getting that one. I was like, those are two mechanisms we really like a lot. Is it going to work together? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, the art is awesome. 
the gameplay was fun and I'm looking forward to playing it some more because I think it's one of those that we're going to be able to just go, hey, okay, this, 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 and this. Oh, that's right. Okay, let's go. I think right. it's really going to be easy to pick back up after the fact. <sighs> well, it's, well, it's got that so it's got that deck building thing to it where, uh, as in most deck building games, you start off very simplistic. You yeah. have these certain cards that you can play, and you you grow organically through the game, and you, you can learn the cards as you go. So you don't mm-hmm. have to explain everything that happens in the game. But it does have a lot going on. It's got... Uh, tracks that you're trying to get up on influence in it's got uh deck building worker placement it's got combat it's got um it's got it all card driven combat it's got a lot of things well and it's funny because you guys know i'm kind of like mediocre on combat stuff the combat in this is great yeah it's 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 less combat and more airy control ish yeah it's it's just counting up points i've got 20 points you got 23 points she wins you kind of know what you're getting into right well they have the card they have the secret card that you can play but still but it's within reason i mean it's kind of like to me um um um, blood rage is kind of the same way to me because you it you know what you're seeing and then they've got some cards okay we're good you know you it's quick and easy it's not difficult to kind of make yourself through the process. You don't stop the game for the battle either. That was what always drove me nuts right. about those games where you're like, okay, it's battle time. Everybody kind of just settles in. You well, got to do, do the you battle. Do, you do, you you do, do play a card. But you do, but you don't. It doesn't stall the game out. No, everybody else is sitting here going, oh, I could knit a sweater. There's not a lot of dice for away you know. and killing units. Yeah, and stuff nah, like that. it's none of that. It's, it's This one also cool. has the. the ghost player for two players that's just flipping over a card and it tells you what to do. Yeah, that one. Actually, again, I think they're getting better with the ghost player thing on a lot of these. I it's think they're not. Inter- go ahead. It's not obnoxious. I think you're right. They're integrating. Is that what you? Well, no, I was gonna like, say like they're how integrating they're... how a lot of solo games work. Because a lot of solo games is okay. you flip a card and this is what the solo player does. Yeah. And, and now they're for the for the two player games instead of doing all these arbitrary rule changes yeah. where I do this different, and that different. They have a, you flip a card and it tells you what that player does, which right. is really cool. That's awesome. All right, let's move on. Yeah, Nathan, you'd like it. It's abstracted. It's not... Yeah. Number seven. Ooh. Viscounts of the West Kingdom. Or as some people say in certain circles, Viscounts. Who says that? I won't say. (laughs) Remember they had a whole discussion about discounts versus discounts. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was funny. Okay. Dice Tower people, shame on you. Shame. They were. They were just joking. No, they were joking. They had an argument about why why, why is it pronounced It's by English. Count. Again, English. Well, don't get me on my soapbox. I joke I want, with my students about the English language all I the time. I want to go to the store because I got a good die count. Yeah, exactly. That's... <laughs> I feel sorry for anyone that has to learn the English language because of things like that. Because there's no, like, hey, this rule works. Now there's always exceptions. Number seven. So I love this game. It's a great game. Everyone says, this is crazy low. This is crazy. Like I said, this could be number three. Eight through three for me is fluid, depending on my mood. Um, But this is where it landed. The reason I think uh, it landed here is... I don't know. I don't know why it landed here. It just did. But anyway, Viscounts is... uh, pseudo deck building game it's more of a, a deck conveyor belt game <laughs> so you have a deck of cards that you have in the game you're going to be building that as time goes by but you actually play the cards down on this what i consider like a conveyor belt you put the card down and then you get the actions based on that card and that card slides over and you play another card and that card slides over and you play another card and then a card drops off and cards have different powers they have powers when they're pl- when they're first played there's powers when they're in the conveyor belt there's powers when they drop off so you got to combo when the when you need the powers and when they're going to drop off and things like that to to take all your actions and what's interesting there's mechanisms in the game where you can take and reorder those so if you want a, a card to drop off earlier, you can do do some action that lets you rearrange your cards. Or if, sometimes if a player lands on your spot, you get the option to do that mm-hmm. to get that drop off power quicker. Maybe you don't want that card for its you know action while it's laying on the on the table, but you want the action when it drops off. So that's cool. And then there's all this other stuff going on the board. You got a little dude, your little your little viscounts moving around the board and doing different actions. You can build buildings. You can uh, recruit recruit more cards for your deck you can put meeples in this castle there's a cool little 3d little castle that you're putting meeples in and that's kind of an area control type thing that's going on so lots of cool mechanisms in the game i don't know why this one i don't know why um i don't know this one just landed where it was because i think i it, it 
for whatever reason, my my the games I liked this year were the ones that were the the kind of the meatier ones, and this one's compared to whoa the, whoa whoa hold on a minute. Are you saying you like heavier games? Yes, but this one this compared so to some shooting. of the other ones on my list is mm. is not uh, as high. But the, all these games are amazing. Uh, all these like I said, all these games are about, probably land in my top one hundred somewhere next year. So. Yeah, all you're this one. I know, I know this one was a lot of people's favorites, but, uh, you yeah, know, it landed where it landed. Seven. I, yeah. <laughs> uh, Nathan says that's embarrassingly low. I know, I know. <laughs> I believe you said embarrassingly low, right? Wasn't that the term you used? Yes. Yeah, well. So, <laughs> you guys are really... It is, it, I will this say this, it is my favorite of the three West Kingdom games. Does right. that count for anything? Right. <laughs> Hawk's cool. <laughs> What's your number seven? Are they, are like they talking English. smack over there? No, I was getting the read lime, rhymes with lead and red limes, rhymes with lead. I can't even say the tongue twister. Yeah, the English language <laughs> is crazy. Read and lead. You almost have to learn the English language through memorization rather than pronunciation. Yeah. In a lot of ways. Yeah, and a lot of context and stuff. Yeah, it's, it's pretty rough. All right. My number seven is a fire. That is a bonfire. Because Feld is on fire again. Oh my yeah, goodness. he's back with a big, heavy, finally beasty, beasty Euro. Yeah, for a while he was kind of doing some light. I don't want to say light and fluffy because that's definitely not his thing either. Well, but he was, he he was doing that, some weird, not he was doing his, some different ones, not his usual, usual type thing. of games. And then he brought this bonfire. I wanted to play it again because it kind of. I feel like partway through the game. It clicked better for us. Yes. That might have helped that we got a rule wrong, too. We did get a rule wrong for the first <laughs> two or three rounds of the, the game. Gameplay. So that kind of made, made a little bit of a difference, too. <clears throat> but, you know, that's that's how those go. So by the time we got through all of that, and we we're like, oh, yeah, duh. Okay. Oh, now I can, you know, it, it, everything kind of changed from there. Right. So I'm looking forward to playing this one again. You've got... This may be his most complicated game. Yeah. Uh, of, yeah. Of, we've played, of all the ones we played, and we played nearly all of them, I think this may be his most complex game. Yeah, because you've got... I still laugh about some of this because some of the theme just cracks me up. But. I told you the theme. I read you the I theme. Know. And I know. I, I, okay. I told it with okay, so much... Okay, tell them the theme because I still get the giggles about this theme because... It's... No, you go ahead. Listen, do you guys want to know the theme? Go ahead. Go ahead. You go ahead. And if the, I, if you know the people I, in the chat want to know the theme, I'll tell the theme. I have, like, edited the theme so much, I don't even remember the original one very well now because to <laughs> me, I'm like, Yoda... There's and no Yoda. They're, they're, they look like Yodas. There's no Yodas. There's little Yodas in the game. So you have Yodas, and what was the name of the other dudes? Oh, yeah, the... the... You call them angels. Yeah, the angels. Yeah, they, they're all, ha, ha, la. I don't know what they're doing. But um, they look like angels. So we have angels and Yodas, and you got little... You have portals that are coming from this side, and then you have the actual walkway coming from the other side, and you want to have them cross so that your angels can walk down and hang out and basically break the Yodas free so they can go make you some victory points. What? I'm just telling you how the what? game works. This is a simplified what? version. Of how, what? Am I wrong? You're very wrong. No, and then you make bonfires. <laughs> anyway, that's how I'm, I'm, that's how I'm sticking to my story. I'm just saying. No, it's, it's, uh, and burning stuff. Yeah, exactly. And there's fire. Lots of fire. No, it, okay, so there's, uh, I don't understand because there's a walkway and all I have to do is walk down the walkway to get to the bonfire, but somehow you have to have a portal in between the bonfires the walkway are, and the bonfire. The border the bonfires are magical. The walkway must be too then to because you have to have the... a portal. I'm just so confused. It's all linear. It's like <laughs> right there. I'm like, just step forward. Yeah, there's a portal there's a, you have to build a portal to get to the magical bonfire. Okay, well, I'm gonna build a portal between here and the dining room so that you guys can all come in to dinner Which, next well, time. Well our dining so. our, our our dining room's not magical, so you don't need a portal. <laughs> Some days it's magical. <laughs> No, they didn't say they wanted the theme, so we're not going to... Yeah, gonna, see? They're, they're but, all about just burning stuff with Yoda. They don't, Thank they you. don't know the theme. Thank you, chat. It's an amazing see? theme. It is not. If, if we talk my about... If it's, if it's higher up on my list, you're going to get the theme. <laughs> <laughs> Are you done? Uh, hey, we're back. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. That's so strange. Sorry about that. Everything about our computer is strange. All right, let's move on to my number six. Let's see what it is. I don't even remember. <laughs> Bonfire. <laughs> <laughs> my number six is the other tea game I hinted about. What? Tekinu. 
obelisk of the sun. Thank you, Egyptians, for being slightly easier to pronounce for us because we're sad. Okay. <laughs> Is it Tikkanu? T- I spelled you it wrong. You spelled it wrong. Ah, uh, editing error. Fire your editor. I did spell it wrong. Oh man. Let me fix that. You put Tikkanu. Tikkanu. Oops, that's not right either. Tikkanu. What is happening? Guys, okay, our train just went there off we the go. rails. We, ooh, so this is the other Tershi game? Tershi? Tershi. Tershi. But he Tursi. did this with another designer. Yes, he did. I don't remember the name. And they're both rock stars in my book. I'm just it's saying. This, this is the... They did, I think they've designed some games together before. But anyway, right. so this is the Kenu. This is another heavy, heavy, heavy Euro game. Crazy heavy Euro game. I prefer this one over the other one. You know why? Why? Dice. Uh... <laughs> So this one is, it's a really cool, like, crazy, heavy Euro game. We just talked about this recently. What did we talk about this on? Oh, your top 100. We talked about this on your top 100. Like, we just talked about it. Like Spoilers! I didn't say where. <laughs> so anyway, so this one, this one, uh, it reminds me a lot of Trajan. So if you like Trajan, you potentially could like this game. It has six different regions of the board that you're doing something very different in. Um, one region you're building statues, another region you're making marketplaces, another region you're doing technologies, and every, every region kind of plays, interplays with each other, where I feel, in my opinion, Trajan, there's not a lot of interplay between those little mini-games. This one, no. it really, this mini-game drives you, this mini-game that helps you do this other oh one. Oh my gosh, it all It all just kind of works together. But it's got a really cool mechanism with the, 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 what is the hook? The hook for this one, he, all, all his games have a hook. The hook for this one is you have an obelisk that's spinning around, and based on uh, which way it's facing, certain dice are basically good dice, and then some dice are bad dice, and some other dice are kind of in the middle of the road. So you're kind of balancing your good dice with your bad dice, so you can't you can't just do all the good dice and not do any of the, the whatever the middle of the road dice. There's a balancing act there. There's just yeah. so much going on. It's, it's oh, a wonderful man. game. A lot of stuff. Um, but it's really cool because the game, it really starts out and you're like, you're just barely, it seems like you're barely doing anything. You're like, mm-hmm. how the heck am I going to do anything in this game? And by the end, you're like, just, you're just like swimming and stuff. There's all sorts of stuff. Your victory points are going off the charts and things like that. But it's a very much a point salad game. It's a very thinky game. It's yes. a very, uh, there's a lot of thought, like I said, of, of if you want to say, I want to do this one thing. Well, in order to do that one thing, I need to do this, this, and that. And how yeah. am I going to get those things done to be able to do this other thing I want to do? It's a really solid, amazing game. All the all all their games, all the the Turchy games, Turchy, Tur Tur Turchy. All all his games are so awesome. Stay out of trouble. He is he is he is batting batting a thousand. He well, really is. Well, seven fifty because I'm not a big fan of Zulkin, but. I think I think you need to give it another shot. Someday. Uh, maybe we'll I'm give Zulkin saying, another shot. I'm just saying. But yeah, this Tommy game. will bring it for a game day. This game's heavy. Tons of rules. <laughs> Hard to learn, but extremely rewarding. Yeah, very much so. And very we'll be good. talking about it more in a little bit. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Man, you guys are talking about some good stuff in the chat. I, I'm loving it. Um, so my your number six? My number you spell six. It right? Yes, actually. <laughs> actually, no, you put the dash in the wrong place, so you actually did mess up. That's not spelling, though. It's it's grammar. Oh my gosh. Formatting. Actually, I just went with your formatting, so no, congrats. You no, yes, you I did. That's no. how it was for the last one. Oh, my crazy. game is Red Cathedral. <laughs> if my IT guy could catch up here. I'm, I'm right saying, here. I'm ready. Saying, I'm on uh-huh. it. I'm on a case. Let me Red, Red Cathedral. Cathedral tiny, though. This, it was one of those games that um, before we got it, Hunter showed me Rotto or Z. Somebody was playing it or... I don't remember who it was. Yeah, somebody was playing it, and he's like, you need to see this. And I was like, yes, I want to try this game. And it was it was one of those that kind of surprised me, too, how much I was going to like it. Because it's not it's another one of those that's in kind of a smaller box. It's not um, built to be this big, huge production mm-hmm. and this and that. But the, the mechanisms in the game and how it runs and everything was just really nice. It's fun. It's medium. It's not super heavy. It's not light. It's kind of fit nicely in the middle yep and my brain just went what's the main mechanism for you, the the you have the little rondelle where you're moving the yeah, dice the around rondelle. Thank and you. Rondelle. Uh, using that you're moving dice around to take different actions there's different regions of this rondelle that you, gives you certain actions yeah and the value of the dice and how many dice are in each region helps you out and it's a shared 
uh, yeah, thing. Sure. You're not, you're not, you're, you're doing your all own. suffering together. You're all, you're all working together. Yeah. Well, not working together. You're utilizing the same uh, yes. space to do that. Yes. And you're basically building the cathedral. So you're building, you have little cards that tell you, you have to have so many of these different resources to be able to build this section. Mm-hmm. And so you have to go out and use that rondelle to, to gather those resources. So yeah. it's, it's really, it's a really cool game. Yeah. Very interactive because the, the dice utilizing it, like I said, utilizing the same area and you're building sections of the cathedral. What, what I thought was funny is that, um, when you go out to the se- section of the cathedral that you can see and you can see what resources you need and you basically can reserve a spot. Say, I want to build that spot. And uh, someone can come along and build a spot above yours because you're building it in layers. And if they finish your, your their layer before your layer, if you're below them, you, the, the SAR gets angry at you for being lazy or whatever. I may have purposely sniped <laughs> one of yours with that exact thing. I'm like, oh, he built below me. Hmm, I think I could finish mine. Yeah, that was, it, was it was fun. Funny. It's really, it's a really, it's cool. really kind of quick sn- snippy for us anyway. It's probably less than that. It's probably a 45 minute game. Yeah, it was pretty quick. Uh, plays really well. It's really it ramps up nicely. It's, it's yeah, cool. and it was it is a very Euro cover. You're correct. It's it's very Euroy, really. It's, yeah, it's fun. So it's just kind of nice to have something different like that again. It's not something quite like what we've had for right. a while. It's just a different. And this one's kind of hard um, to find because it's only yeah. Why is this, that? This one. Brazilian company is the oh, only one that's okay. pregnant right now, so okay. I kind of had to go dig and search for it. So it's okay. kind of harder. I don't think it's in mass release yet. I could be wrong about that. Okay, well, worth looking for, I think, um, because it is my number six. I really do think it is really fun. It's interesting that Brazilian company released it, but anyway, mm-hmm. no, it's the, I, I kind of like the fact that we've got stuff more scattered around because one country has issues or something, and then no one gets any more games, right? right? So right. I like the fact that we're much more. Um, worldwide with some of these, I think that's cool. But I like it. I hope I they enjoy do more. It. It's not, not. It's not, not on your list. Not on my list. But uh-huh. I did enjoy it. Uh huh. I enjoyed almost uh-huh. every game we played this year. No, it was, it was only a handful of exceptions. Really? Let's move on. Number five. I don't. I don't know what number five is. Your Let's number see. one's Hughes and Clues. I can already no. sense it. But number five is the aforementioned bonfire. All right. So here's the story. So the great guardians. Who make the bonfires grew grew tired of our laziness and stupidity. <laughs> Don't I, may, we all? I, I may have added that part. <laughs> they took the bond, the knowledge of the bonfires, and fled the mainland out into the islands. So you have to go out to the islands, travel to the islands, and meet with the guardians and say, "How can I get the bonfires back for our our our, our village?" And they say, "You have to perform these tasks." So you must go out and search through the islands and gather resources to perform these tasks. And if you do, they give you the knowledge of the bonfire. But but you can improve your bonfire. You can, you can make it amazing. If you can bring a guardian, convince him to come back to the mainland and visit your bonfire, it makes it awesome. And then it releases the Yodas. <laughs> The gremlins, or what are they called? The uh, gnomes. The there gnomes. Were gnomes. The, the gremlins. <laughs> The gnomes, oh the, the gnomes that live out in the forest, oh. they'll help you. They have a little bit of knowledge of the area. They can guide you and help you through your tasks. Doesn't that sound amazing? My version's better. <laughs> <laughs> I, see why I just went with mine? It's so much more simple and, and basic. <laughs> but this is your, your standard <laughs> Feldy point salad game. The theme doesn't actually but, matter. But... Uh, it's very, uh, it's very interesting. It's very, uh, I don't know what the word, tactile for a felt yeah, game. Yeah, it is. There's a lot of a lot getting of tiles and, and building stuff. Because when you start out, your little mainland area, your little village, is like has almost nothing in it. But then you have to build walkways for the bonfires. You have to build the portals. You talk about. Got to go somewhere. They're just standing around. It, it's, it's very point salady, but there's a lot of inner, a lot of mechanisms that interact with each other. It's, it's really, it's a, oh, I, I enjoyed it. Spoiler alert. It might be my new favorite film game. Actually, I'm not surprised by that. It's super heavy. It's super thinky. It does a lot of neat new things. And? 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 and you're on a boat. You're on a boat. <laughs> as soon as we pulled out the board and I saw that, I was like, oh, Hunter's going to fall in love with this game. I was like, because the little gnome guys, I, I, the, I the, joke the, about the gnomes, but they're, they're basically cards that you can get that give you special powers and special abilities. It's got so much going on. It's got all these objectives that you can you can earn. Um, it's it's a really cool game. I really enjoyed it. It's a point salady game that doesn't 
necessarily feel point salad Yeah, because you're just so busy trying to make things work. Right. You don't think about the points as much as just getting things to work, right? So. Yeah, Yoda, gremlins, or goblins. They're actually gnomes. <laughs> <laughs> None of the above. So I love it. I love this game. It's it's awesome. I enjoy it. It's uh, kind of hard to get. It just came out. It like was in print. It like flashed in print and went out of print because everyone grabbed it up. But uh, if you go like, for it. If you like the heavier felds, if you're you're a person that likes Trajan, that like that likes Bora Bora, the big meaty weighty felds. I can't think of any other ones that are that aquasphere. Aquasphere. aquasphere although is heavy. Aqu- although aquasphere isn't one of the better. No, but it's versions. heavier. It's heavy. Yeah, it's definitely. I would. Um, I like. I said when she talked about it, I think it's his heaviest game that I've played of all, and we've played almost all of them. I think it's his heaviest game. Yeah, because you really have to plan ahead where you're going to take your little boat and stuff. There's a lot of planning that goes into it. So, all right, let's move on to your number five. All right, my number five has already been mentioned by Hunter quite handily, actually. The Tawantinsuyu or Tawantinsuyu. I'm not sure which way the stress goes on that one. Um, for the Inca Empire, oh my goody goodness, I love this game. It just melts your brain. It's heavy, and like he said, it's something different and new and fresh, and it's got this cool board where you're going up the pyramid, and each level does different things, and again, when you go to a position, you're kind of triangulated by what kind of resources you can get, one, two, or three, based off, off of what you did to get to that spot, and... I just, I just love how it builds up and the different things that you can do with it. It's another one of those. I'm, he pretty much told you all about it, but I like the fact that we can try a bunch of different tactics to um, achieve victory. And I think the replayability for that is going to make it higher because of it. I really, really, really enjoy this. I can't wait to play it again. Um, I'm looking forward to having some marathons. You know, and I'm looking forward to board game day. I think everyone in our board game group is going to have to like pick that one game that pick their, well, we're probably all going to make lists, but pick a game that we like, I have to play this game before I leave. I got a pile of three see, plus player games down see, there. Plus we have those games. Plus, okay, it's going to have to be like a week long thing, I guess. We'll just save your vacation time. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, um, this is one of those, I want to play with more players to see how it plays. I'm curious how the dynamic will change. There's a lot going on in this game, and it's very heavy, and I really like it. So, good times. Yep, it's a good one. I, I, mm-hmm. All these games that are on my list, when we play, we haven't had a chance. We only played them probably once or two times. I don't know if we played any of them three times. And every one of the ones on my list, when we were done, I'm like, I'm ready to play this again. Oh, yeah. Like, immediately. Yeah. Like, yeah. immediately. Like, I want to mm-hmm. play this again. Yep. So we're probably going to do another round through all our 2020 games pretty Which, soon. Yeah, I'm actually kind of excited about that. Spring Break 2021, that's a little early time. <laughs> all right. The right things are going. Number four. All right. It's my number four. Yeah, what is it? It's the last of it could go in any order. No, it's actually number three is the last of any order. It was already oh. mentioned, and I like it a lot more yeah. than her, and that is The Lost Runes of wow. Arnak. You, like, really, really I like this. I really like this game. Wow. And, and the... the the reason I, I this is higher up on the list is when we finished that game, we talked about it for like a half an hour after we were done with the game, <laughs> and I thought about it like the rest of the night. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I do this different, and I want to try doing this, and oh, I, should, I don't think yeah. I should have done this, and yeah. I, oh wow, I wonder what it would be like if you did this instead of this, and I, I, it just was just like, oh, well, the way you're ramped up. I mean, it's just so so, good. so many game, so many so many things. That I was like, I want to try this other way, and that's a sign of an amazing game where you don't go, oh, that's the way you play it. That's yeah, yeah. You you're not seeing that one streamlined way. It was to win. There's so many it's things. True. Like it's like she was talking about that she wanted to avoid doing the the for the most part the the exploring the, the new the places. Exploring new places. And, and now he's like, that's all I want to do. I want to just every round I want to go and open another one of those up. You do that and I'll snipe off of them and get the resources <laughs> later. I'm cool. I'm cool. It was just it was that it's just an awesome game. If you yeah. like worker placement and deck building, it this this marriage of I hope there's a lot more games like this that where it's um, worker placement driven by deck building. Uh, this the this one's less that's awesome. driven by the the deck building than. Uh, the other game which you mentioned, uh, what was it? Oh, I forget what it is. Dune something. Anyway, <laughs> so this one, it's a, it's an amazing game. It's so much fun. This one blows my mind how much this ramps up. You were talking about how the game ramps up. We literally did the first round of the game, and we went, how the heck are you going to do 
anything in this game. We're like, we're supposed to get I'm all like, the way I'm up like, this ladder? I'm like, there's like, a, there's like a track that you're going up that's where, the, I guess, the I would think the majority of your victory points come from moving up this track, right? Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's where the most of them come from. And we were like, there is, it is impossible to get to the top of that track. There is just no way. I wonder if it's, yeah. I was thinking, okay, maybe with more players, with more spaces yeah, open up, like, oh, maybe no. you can get to the top. By round four, we were at the top of the track. Yeah, it was crazy. one of our. You basically moving two things along, up the track. One one can't pass the other. Well, well, one can one can go up all the way up, but there's, there's like there's two two items are going up the track. <laughs> one cannot go past the other, but one can go leave the other one behind. I don't know. I can. No, I'm sure I'm explaining that some other way. But anyway, we got we got the one of them up to the top of the track like round three or four, and we're like. How did that happen? I, I figured out a way to chain them, and then that's, all of a sudden Hunter started catching me, and I'm like, "crap." That that that's, and then you had a better engine to get your little. It's a micro micro. One's one's a exploring, magnifying glass one's, and a book or something. One's exploring and one's research. Okay, yeah. So and your exploring you know, has to happen before, before your, your research. research, right? So the, the one can't pass. The yeah, other. and you figured out how to get your research going way higher up the ladder than yeah. me. So I, I it blew I my was mind. Sunk, man. It's only it's, five. I think it's only five rounds. <laughs> Five, I think it's five rounds, and it just ramps up insane. It just, the engine, your engine just explodes in this right. game. It's pretty cool. I, I'm really impressed with how they did that. And, and like I said, we didn't even unlock very many of those no. powerful, more powerful worker placement spots. So. And you're right, we probably should do more of those. We need to do more of them, so. Is this game language independent? No. The cards have text. Do they? Them. They have symbols, too. It's close though. Um, I have to There's look at a that. There's a lot. It's, it's mostly kinda, all symbols in the game. It is but almost think, language independent. I think some of the cards have text. No, they're mostly symbols too. Yeah, I want to. Very few of the cards actually have text on them. Yeah, and mostly it's for it's flavor. Like names it's and for flavor. And I stuff. think you could. You, you might be, look, it would be close. I would look it, it up on BGG close. and see, look at the pictures and stuff. I want to say it is. The only oh, man, thing, the only, so good. the only thing that would, the only thing that wouldn't be language independent would be the cards. Th- yeah, but I think if I remember right, it was just like they have names. I don't think they have. Oh, the specialty cards though, telling you what you can do for your turn. Right. The specialty cards do have words on them. Yeah. But it's telling it's the, you to do special cards. things. Yeah, it's the cards. just the cards. The rest of the board and the pieces, else is symbols. all the tiles are symbols. But yeah, the specialty stuff because they do such funky things. There, yeah, they do have text on it now. Because right. it's like you pay less yeah. for this taking this action yeah. and things like that. So yeah, yeah, and Coralou, yeah, Coralou says the same thing. So yeah, it's the ones you buy in the market. Those have text. But yeah, otherwise, you are you're close, and it might be something. Uh, mm, I don't know. And depending on and if how much of a given um, how much English or whatever language you get this in, like you know, it might be doable. It may be worth looking into. So, but hmm. like I said, I hope this is a trend. This oh man, deck this, building this, work this, replacement oh, games. Oh man, this is good. Oh, so good. They're they're so gonna good. be some of my favorites. So good. Yep, I agree. We're on to my number four now, right? Yep. Okay, my number four is Tekenu. Um, yes. So. I had the T games basically right next to each other because honestly, the more and more I think about these, the more and more I could almost switch these back and forth. I like I told both you my, of my them eight through so three much. Yeah, and Takenu, I think is slightly heavier. Um, yes, it is. It, yeah, you think I think so the other, I think it's heavier and even more thank you than the other games. Yeah, which is saying quite a bit because Taiwan Tensuyu is like crazy heavy. But that I one's more too. puzzly. The, that's true well this one's kind of puzzling it is too, in a yes. way too because you have to keep track of is it light or dark out because if it's light out you there's different the different colored dice can do different things or they're inactive some of them are inactive um <laughs> depending on where you're at right. and what's going on and again everything chains off of it so if you can't do that one section well that probably means you can't build off and go and build this monument that's over on this particular corner or you can't worship that deity over here or whatever I mean it all has some kind of reaction so you have to pay really close attention to when you're going to be turning the obelisk and changing it from day to night or afternoon or whatever it's going to be switching to because that means in future turns it's going to affect how you chain. Right. It's woo, but it's, but it does have ways to mitigate that. There's, there are there's there ways are. to where you can take any dice that you want. It's true, but some of that's kind of expensive, right? And right. You have to plan for that. Right. It takes resources, right? 
So you got to have a good resource engine right. built. I, it's oh, it's so good though. Yep, point, it's so good. Mini game point salady goodness. Yes, and yes, we're gonna have a lot of crossovers, Nathan. It's sad to say because we, um, well, I don't want to say it's sad. It's just they're that good. <laughs> but we agreed on a lot of them that we were like we kept talking about afterwards, and we right. have I have a lot that I want to talk about after this that were on the short list. I don't. I don't have a short list. Oh, that is a lie. I don't. You don't? Mm-hmm. Oh man, I do. And you guys I, have been talking I had, about some good I had, ones. I had, I had eleven games. And I decided not to do the legacy game because we haven't finished it yet. Yeah. So I don't have a short list. My list is ten. Yeah. All right, my number four. Or number three. It's the last of it could be a three through eight games. And it's I like it slightly more. They have the same mechanisms ish. Okay. But different games with different theme. Uh huh. And that is Dune Imperium. I knew you liked this one. Oh, Dune Imperium so good. <laughs> um, I like it slightly more than uh, Lost Ruins, just because that's my mood today. Um, but I like this one because it just seems like it has a little more going on in, in things that you can do. I like the combat. I like the going up the tracks and influencing. It reminds me a lot of... Uh, of Twilight Imperium in the in the way of the scoring works, it's like a race. You got yeah. first one to ten wins. Well, first one to ten win in, triggers the end of the game, and whoever has the most at the end wins. But usually, the first one to ten uh, is likely to win the game because you have the spice. Yeah, and it's just <laughs> it's really cool. It's uh it's 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 interesting in the decision space. I think the the playing of the cards is more interesting in Dune yeah. because you'll have a hand of cards, right? And they're multi-use cards, so yeah. I can play a card to play a card to be able to put a worker in a certain spot to take the action of that spot. Yeah. But then I'm foregoing the benefit of that card, right? So after you play all your workers, whatever cards you have left over at the end of the round, you play those down, and it's like a, a deck building game. Yeah. You, you you get use the the I forget what it's called the rest or the refresh uh, actions of the card that gives you money to buy new cards and it gives you some actions lets you it lets you do all sorts of things. But then you're foregoing using it for the other action in the first part yeah. section of the round. Yep. So, you, so every card has, for the most part, has two uses, and you have to. It's really, it's really thinky. It's a great um, decision to go. Okay, I got. I really need to go to that spot. But yeah. man, it gives me like three money to buy cards if I don't yep. use it for that. And you really have to. It's 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 solid. And then on top of all that, you got these influence tracks. You're influencing the different uh, factions of Doom, the Bene Gesserit and the Space Guild, and all those different factions. And that's how you get a good chunk of your points is moving up those influence tracks. And also, like utilize it opens up new worker placement spots for those factions that you can do. So it's do I open up a new faction? Do I go over here to get resources? Do what? It's oh, so 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 thinky, so meaty. And then at the end of the round, you have a little combat thing that happens, and it's basically you're throughout the round, your your actions give you certain gives you little cubes or basically little troops, which in the deluxe version are going to be miniatures. But you get these Ooh. little cubes that you're putting out, and you have basically ones that are in reserve, and then ones you're putting in the combat. And then there's a whole kind of a cat and mouse of putting guys in the combat, holding guys back. And then when the combat happens, you have ways to go, okay, I'm going to retreat and save some of my dudes because I'm going to lose. <laughs> or, ha-ha, I'm pulling all these guys out of the reserve to, to attack you and take it. And, and the combats, the rewards for the combats are really valuable. And they're, they're really worth doing. So there's that whole part of, oh my gosh, do I use it for combat? I mean, oh, it's crazy. I love this game. Yeah, it's funny. It's a really solid game. David's asking, are you thinking about getting the upgrade kit for this it's game? It's already ordered. <laughs> okay, well that answers that. I was gonna say it's apparently already he ordered. It's worth it. I ordered them both from the website, so you can order it as a package deal, and I just bought them all at once. That's cool. The the combat you're talking about the combat, and it's so funny because I usually reveal phase. Kind of. I don't know why I call it the refresh phase, but there you go. No, <laughs> I don't know why I liked the combat so much in this. I guess because I was just literally like throwing my guys in there. I right. would be like. You were I'm just gonna make them all fight. I was all like, in. Eh. I was all in. I was so aggressive. In and that. I was doing more of the okay. I think I'm gonna lose. He thought about I'm his gonna, actions. I'm gonna back out of the yeah. fight and I'm go into the. I fight. I was like, what are you guys for fighting? Go fight. And this I is another know. one, just like we've mentioned in several of our games. I think it's the third one that we've mentioned that, or maybe it's 
Maybe I already mentioned this. This is another one where it's a flip a card. It goes block certain spaces and it has a certain number of troops oh, yeah. in combat yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. And then when the combat happens, something random happens with the, the ghost player. So this one has a ghost player so, as well. I have a question. How do you hold your cards there? You were talking about holding your cards again. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Julio was wondering how you hold your cards like that. I, You know, I want to watch him carefully This is symbolic of the cards being fanned out. This is not... I hold cards like this, but the cards are fanned out like this. <laughs> I'm going to tell him to play like that next time we have a film live I'll or something. Hold the cards like this. You have this. to hold your hand I'm like this. I'm hiding them from you. They're behind my hand. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's your number three? We're getting to the good stuff. Getting? This whole list is good stuff. Finally, man. the games like, are starting to get good. That is a lie. Don't my listen to him. Two, my one and two were locked in. Yeah, well... My number three is what I think people thought would be your number three, and that's Viscounts of the West Kingdom. Yeah. Um, man, this is, it, it's such a good game. I really feel like I'm just repeating myself what Hunter said about it. Um, it's It was fun, and it was another one that as soon as we were done playing, I was like, I really want to play this again. I think it's... I, there's no I think about it. It is my favorite out of all of the, the kingdoms... And including the all the, seas. the North Seas, like all those that I think this one's my favorite of all okay. of those. I just agree. Straight up because it's just I agree. solid. It does all of the things that I want it to do. Um, I don't know. Is there anything we should add to this? I feel like I don't want to just be like, and eh, next, but it's. I don't it's really repeat. good. It's, if you, it's if so you good. like, if you like the architects and paladins, you, got, you this one you is have to get this one. It's it's smooth it's, play. It's my favorite. By a good chunk, I think of the yeah. three. I yeah. mean, I really do, I and, and I really love the other two. Yeah. So that tells you how much I Absolutely. love this. Like I said, this I put this was in my, in my what eight or something, seven or eight. But like I said, my eight through three, depending on who, what, which game you compare to which game, they could be reordered. I can see that. It's it's that paradox. The paradox. The paradox of of, of ch choice. Choice. Of, yes. of comparing things. Yes. All right, let's move on to my Our one and two. Fun. You like it, Coralie? So my, my one and two is locked in, not mm -hmm. even close. There is a gap between the other ones to my one and two. Mm -hmm. And I think we have one crossover. And we may cross okay. over at the same number. Uh-oh. My number two is On Mars. Are we now? On Mars. Oh, so good. Best Lacerda game there is. Love this well, game. Shh. Mm. I can't say, because my top 100 is not done yet. Oh. Best Lacerda game. Well, I did my 100, and this is my favorite <laughs> Lacerda game. I'd spoil it. You should have watched it. So, <laughs> this is this is, this is is far and away my favorite one. Not far and away, but I love, I love almost all of the ones I've played. Mm -hmm. But this one just, I love the theme. I love the interaction. I love that, that we almost, there's almost like a, a underlying cooperative feel to the game, even though you're definitely competing you're trying to just to, to yeah. trounce the other person. Yeah. But you kind of work with each other. Like she'll build something and go, "Oh, I can I can build something next to that and get a benefit to do this." And that was cool. It almost feels like we're working together to build this area. Well, you area. kind of share the tech a little bit. Right. I thought that was really cool right. because it reminded me of the way the space programs work a right. lot of times because they do share that information a lot and work together with things. I mean, thinking of the International Space Station for right. example and stuff. And I got that vibe doing that. Right. I thought that was really cool. Because right. you're right. We're all doing our own thing. But, right. hey, here's something cool that you can, you know. Right. So she develops the tech I really need. I can I can kind yeah. of feed off it. She gets a little bit of benefit from me using her tech. But I can use her tech. Yeah. It's just, it's it's amazing. The production is off yeah. the charts. I know it's a super expensive game. But the production is it's gorgeous. crazy good. Gorgeous. Um, love it. Love how it works. I love that. It's Not only is it worker placement. It's two sections of the board worker placement. So yeah. you got the when you're in space out on the space station or whatever. There's all these actions you can do over here that are thematic based on what you're that area you're in. Then you got the other section when you're down on the planet. There's all these other worker placement games, and then there's a whole there's a whole decision space just in the fact when do I do I do I just kind of follow the shuttle back and forth because it periodically goes between the two <laughs> areas, or do I? Do I st hold back and, and stay on the planet and try to do more, more there instead more, of following yeah. the shuttle? Um, and you basically forego a little bit of benefit by a potential benefit by not by not following the shuttle back and forth. Yeah. So many good decisions. So much fun. Ugh, love it. It was turn. interesting because we we for the most part 
follow the shuttle. And then towards the end of the game, it's like you really start to lean towards one area where you're like, I really need to do a lot of things at once, right. planet side. Right. So, but you get so many benefits when right. you go with the shuttle, when you switch over. And we, we both at different points decided to stick around. And it was interesting to do that then because you see what you're missing. You lose a worker refresh potentially. You yeah. lose a, a benefit. From... you got to keep that in mind when right. you do it. And there's a lot. Oh, there's so much. To... But again, the theme was there. I, I thought it was really well done. Really well done. And you have so much to think about. Um, well, I'm going to be on planet side, so I can't do this. I'm not going to have those kinds of resources because I'm on the planet right. you know, versus right. the other one. It was cool. Really cool. Which, you know, I we can keep talking about it because it is my number two. I knew it was your number two. Um, It's, yeah. Everything he said and then some. Even this game, even this game, guys, which is a longer, extremely heavy game. When we're done, I was like, I kind of want to try some different things. And I really like this game. Let's play it again. You know, that, that says a lot with a heavy game. Yeah. When, to me. When we played, to go and play when we played right it away. most recent, the most recent play we had of it was only a little... Like a month ago, not even a month ago. No, not even. Well, it feels few, like a couple few, years ago. A few but. weeks ago, and uh, I played it completely different than I played all the yeah. other times I played. I'm like, I'm going tech. I'm yeah. going to be the tech yeah. guy. Yeah. I'm going to build all this technology. Yep. I'm going to be you know, develop. That's what I'm going to focus. Everything I'm going to do is I'm going to build technologies. Not everything, but mm -hmm. the main focus I'm going to be is getting the technologies. And I, that, that was I enjoyed that quite a bit. Um, mm -hmm. It was awesome. Um, I did a lot less exploring of the planet. I did slightly less building, and it's it worked. There's so many different ways you can play. It's really cool. It is. So if you like the super heavies and you like Lacerda in particular, yeah. If you like worth games, like, you like those other games, Galaris and Venus and uh, see. I, oh man, I still oh. If you like those games, you'll like this game. I, I feel like we need to marathon some Lacerda games so I can balance out my rankings on those a little bit tighter. Because oh, I'll stick with my so statement I've said many times. I think so Lacerda makes the most thematic oh, he heavy does. Euro Hands games down. there is. Hands down. He makes the most Hands thematic amazing. heavy Euro games. Amazing. I know that's a misnomer in a lot of people's But sense, no, it is. But... Because you feel like what you're doing is actually there. I don't feel like you could retheme this game and make it work. Yeah. It's, it's, Unless it's on a different You really planet. feel like you're doing you know, like, what you're doing. You got a yeah. little rover that's moving around the planet doing stuff. You have a little yeah. little buggy that's driving around doing things. You're going up into space. You're I doing certain it. things in space. You're building on the planet. It's just it's so cool. I hope, and it, I don't know, it was kind of fun to think about too because, I mean, last year one of the good things that came out of the year was all the cool space stuff going on and all the different rockets launching and different right. things that tech and trying. It was like... Is this something maybe we can even contemplate in our lifetime? How cool is that? We're playing a game about it, and it seems like sci-fi right, right now, but it's kind of, they're working towards that being some kind of reality. It's right, kind of right. brings an extra edge of excitement to the game, so make a top Lacerda list video. We may have to at some we point. We don't have enough is the problem. We, only, we have we, like 11, 12? No, Lacerdas, we have like six. Oh, no, we do. You're right. You have some other games stacked there. We only have like six Lacerdas. Yeah. As soon as we get to 10... <laughs> well, we just rank the 10, yeah. <laughs> we um, have one down here we haven't played yet. Oh, yeah. CO2. Ooh, so we have seven. We're almost there. <laughs> almost there. My number one, far and away, if you've watched my top 100, you would know what the answer to my number one is because it's way up my rankings already. I don't know what already. you're talking about. No. And that is 18 uh, Chesapeake. I, wanna put a I am so shocked I wanna put by a this. Are you there? shocked by this? Put a space. What ha a ha! Space? You, oh, look at that typo. Oh, I don't. Never, I never claim to be a grammar person, ever. <laughs> it's not. Here we go again. <laughs> 18 Chesapeake. Oh, far and away my favorite 18xx game. One of my favorite games of all time. It takes everything I love about 18xx games, condenses it into a shorter game, streamlines it, and yeah. makes it work two player. Oh, it's good. It's really What's good. your little thing you do? <laughs> <laughs> this game is awesome. If you're if you're if you are interested in diving into the deep end of the pool, not the deep end. If, you, if you're interested in trying out an 18xx game, this is far and away my my the one I'll suggest. It's the best by far the best game 18xx game I've ever played. I love it, love it, love it. It is awesome. Yeah, I can't argue with that. It's on my short list. Spoilers. I'm Actually, ready. I'm it ready. is. On my short list, a big, heavy, 
train game thing is on my list. You all should be shocked, okay? Yeah, this one plays I mean, in good. probably, good. I wouldn't say half the time, but pretty close to half the time of most 18XX game, XX games. Easier to teach. Um, like I said, works. It, the map is designed in such a way it works two players. It's just awesome. So if you're, if you're interested in trying 18XX, I suggest this one. And it is also on 18xx.games. You can go out and play it. Oh, it is. Uh, okay. You can go and play hey, it you out can check there. It out, guys. And uh, yeah, that's neat. It's awesome. Corley wants to play with you, but only if we bribe her with cheesecake. I think that's an easy deal. Oh, 18 ch- cheesecake. 18 cheesecake. That's what she called yeah. it. Yeah, I think back. that's an easy way to go. I think we can handle that. So good. <laughs> now, now let me uh, a little caveat here. If you're a hardcore 18 xxer you're like that's your thing. This is not going to be your favorite. This game. would be a light and fluffy this 18xx, is, this, right? This, this would be a yeah, a light, a light casual uh, filler 18xx. For, <laughs> That's really for the, hard for to the think about, ones. but okay. But yeah, this is. <laughs> Sarah, 18 Chess Peak was the last 18xx game where Hunter trusted me. Oh, yeah, because after we played that, we played 18, Aww. 18 Revenge Death game. <laughs> Love it. It's a if you don't know what 18xx game is, uh, it's just heavy. It's a it's, it's, <laughs> a, it's a stock based train game where you're building routes and uh, trying to get the most building the routes, collecting money. The whole the whole point of the game is to collect the most money, but it's got an interesting kind of twist. Is you you're usually running companies, and the company's money is not your money. You have to find a way for that company to make profits and transition that money into your personal money and your yep. personal money is how you win the game so you do it by owning stocks and giving dividends and building the best companies and taking over other companies or dumping companies on other people oh, yeah. when they're not expecting you to dump companies on them oh you saw that huh <laughs> love it love it no, so this I is actually, a, I, get to, 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 for, for your 18xxers out there this is based on the 1830 uh, line of games uh, 18xx games but it just takes basically streamlined it, makes it more simplistic, easier to teach, uh, easier to play, quicker to play, yeah. all those great things. Yeah. And uh, it's kind of what I was looking for because, I mean, I do love sitting down and playing those six six to eight hour crazy 18xx games. Sometimes I want to play a quicker version. This one gets the gets the point quicker and ends a lot quicker than, than other games. There you go. And there of course, 18x, the 18 check speed is not her number one. In fact... I'm not sure what her number one is. <laughs> I have no clue. What's left? Oh, you'll know as soon as you see it. What is I'm, left? I'm shocked that I don't think you mentioned it, actually. I did not mention it. Okay. Just... My number one is the Castles of Tuscany. Um, Wow. Seriously, like, okay, I know. You're like, my favorite Feld is Bonfire. And I'm like, that's nice. It's really good, but... Castles, I really, really, really liked even more. I don't know. Maybe the, I maybe with another play of Bonfire, those two will battle for supremacy. But right now, I... Oh, man. It, oh, it's so good. I really loved Castles of Burgundy. And it kind of looked like it at first. And I'm like, okay, this is cool. But the things that it does with it... I love the two tracks um, for victory points. Because you have one that's like for that round that you build up. But... It keeps going, and that adds to your score at the end of each round. And so you can just crank that thing up and get all these points, and you get more and more points. So it just, the way it ramps up with the, his pointy salad goodness, right? I love it. I love the way that play, played. So I am super stoked about Castles of Tuscany. I don't know. Do you think it'll grow on you more? And where is it on your list? Because I'm. I gave it an eight, it... and you had to have it be a nine to get on this okay. list. So okay. you, it was not tall enough to ride the ride. Oh, okay. I, I like this fair. game quite a bit. I think I like the original, the the original Castles of Burgundy better than really? this. Really, really? Yeah. This mm. one's kind of a little too light and fluffy for me. It's. <sighs> It's not light and fluffy, by the way. It's a Feld game, so it's, just keep that in mind. It's it, compared to Burgundy, Castles of Burgundy, it's lighter than Castles of Burgundy. Yeah, it might be. This, honestly, as I was playing, I was thinking, this might be my... If somebody wants to try Feld, this might be my go-to try this game. This is, uh, 100%. It's I agree, 100%. So this is, this is the awesome. new, this is the This is the new first Feld. A lot of people said Burgundy is the, the, usually the... The one you want to start with. One that everyone I, says. Tuscany is... It has it has the same feel. It's not the same game. It has no. the same feel That's as Burgundy, 
but it is easier to teach, quicker mm-hmm. to play, um, and yeah, it's just, it's just a lighter game. It's easier. I can see why you like it. It's card based. It's quick. It's 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 a really short game. I mean, it's it's and it's pretty. You blink and the game's over. It's like I want to say thirty to forty five minutes long. Is it really that short? Yeah, yeah, maybe it is. I, we both look back like it's on the box. It just says Castles of Tuscany on it. I can um, almost see it. And you're like, oh, I can see through the box. But yeah, it's. Um, I don't know. It was just delightful. I really want to play it again. I could play it over and over. And because maybe partly because it is faster, you could actually do that as opposed to on Mars, where you're like, let's play that again. No, I'm exhausted. But it's. It's up there. And yeah, if you have not played a Feld, I really and truly would say. You should try this one. This would be a good one to start with because of that. I don't know. It's just, it's a lot. Tommy of... says it's a new little Eastland. No, it's, it, I enjoyed this game quite a bit. No, it's I, not. I, I, it's I, won't, not... I won't pass up playing this game. It's just, it's just. I don't think it's quite as light as La Isla. No, it, it's close. It's actually pretty close. You think so? It's pretty close. Mm, I'll have to play it's it again. pretty close. It's pretty light. But yeah, mm-hmm. I enjoyed it quite a bit. I, I... Well, pretty light. Remember, this is medium, okay? <laughs> pretty light for me. It's, it, for you, it's light, but. For the average bear, for normal, sane people, I'm just saying it's more like medium. <laughs> for sane people. All right, quickly. Quickly? Yeah, go oh, over your short list. I don't have man. a short list, so I have nothing to talk about. Man! Okay, this is hard. Okay. I will say this, that the odds are we're halfway through Pandemic Legacy. Oh, wait, yeah. I guess I'll take your, your thing off. Oh, yeah. We're halfway through Pandemic Legacy. Odds are, the way it's going, it would be... The middle of the pack of my top ten, but I'm reserving judgment for when we do our revised list in June, and then it can land where it lands once we're finished with the game. Yeah, in fact, I, it's mostly set up underneath. The yeah, it's box. actually under here. I'm looking at it right now, and I'm like, I want to show you pieces. <laughs> it's set up. It's so hard. You guys have no June, idea. I want June to share. June is set up under the table. I really right like now. the theme. I think this one's my favorite as far as the theme. So far, yes, I agree. This has the best theme. <sighs> But anyway, yeah. So what's your short list? What, what? It's not that short. <laughs> Shorten your short list. Oh no, it's it's pretty short. Um, trekking the world, Isle of Cats, Papillon. Um, what Star- was that again? Papillon. I said it wrong. Starcadia Quest, um, Splendor Marvel. It's a wonderful world. Um. We I'm surprised about it that one didn't make your list. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. No, it's I a wonderful to... world. Is is nineteen? Is it? Yes. Oh my bad. Well, scratch that. Like I was that. wondering, I was like, why did I see that on my choices? Um, it's 19. What did I say? Pan Am, The Crew, 18 Chess Peak, Mariposas, Calico um, was my 11. I'm surprised Calico didn't make your list. It was my 11. You loved that And game. Beyond the Sun was 12. Beyond the Sun didn't? I forget where well, you missed that. It yeah, I, oh man. It's the starkness of it. It's bugging me. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it's going to take I'm gonna me a while. I'm going to get little stickers. Gonna I'm like, going to get little stickers and put little it on the board. Little space stickers? Yes. It's like Yokohama. It took a while to grow on me. Yokohama, I was so angry about the art. I don't know why. There's some games that just hit me that way. And and Beyond the Sun did that. And I love the game. But I hate the art. Calico was... That with Lost Runes of Arnak were my two big surprises. I thought Calico was going to be basically like um, Patchwork, but with cats. I thought it was going to be a light, fluffy, little silly, cutesy game. And then I got smacked in the face with this heavy puzzle game, and I was like, this is awesome! Yeah. And there's more than one little kitty cat in there, and you know, I'm a sucker for cats anyway. And I'm, the whole time I was annoying Hunter with like, look at this cat! Look at this cat! Look oh at my this god, cat. I thought I'm sure it'd be on your list. Yeah, and he, yeah, I, I terrorized Hunter with that game. I love it. And we were actually talking about, that was another one we talked about a lot after we played it. It was like, wow, there's so much more game here than we were expecting. And I love it. I want to introduce that one to people because it's gorgeous and it's something that people, it's, it's just the eye candy of it. Right. And the art is amazing and the color scheme and everything. And then the game, you sit there thinking about it. You've got these three little triangulated like end game goals, but they all sort of overlap a little bit. So when you're making the things match up, like it might say you need to have, you know, three different patterns of the same color on one, but the other one's got different goals and they overlap. So you're going to have to pick some that work for both if you want to get those points anyway. And when you pull them out of the bag, at least two player, there were some times where we're like, this isn't possible anymore because right. the stuff we were pulling well, out of the bag are like, okay, what's your get, plan you're not gonna B, build, right? You're not going to build the perfect board. So at some point, yeah, you, have, some, some point you have to switch gears, right? Yeah. 
And so it was just, I yeah, was shocked. I was shocked that wasn't on your list. Yeah. Now, I saw some games, too, that people were talking about that we haven't tried that I am intrigued. I saw what you guys were talking about in the chat. Um, New York Zoo and Truffle Shuffle. I've seen stuff about those, and I'll, those look really cute, and I want to play those. Then you guys were talking about some that I know nothing about. Uh, Godspeed and Forgotten Waters. You guys were talking about those, and I'm like... Forgotten Waters is the cooperative storytelling pirate game. Oh, man. Somebody play that with me that's not Hunter, then. Okay. He's cooperative. He's out. Okay. Someday. Uh, Godspeed. Uh, I, I think that's someday. a Kickstarter game, I think. Was that Kickstarter? Who was... Um, Larry, was that you talking about it? Who was talking about Godspeed? Tell me. Tell me. I need info. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on a whim this morning, out on BGG, our guild, I put a question Ooh. asked what your favorite game of 2020 was. Ooh, okay. And I got a handful of responses. Ooh, goody. So you guys didn't have much time, but I'm going to go through them real quick. Okay, excellent. Maybe. I can't see. <laughs> I can read it. Do you want me to read down? Yeah, just say the name. And... So Taylor Gardner said Santa Monica. Oh, that's another one that I don't think I saw in the chat, but um, I want to see that one. John H. says has to be on Mars. Oh, man. I agree. Ryan Moss, Apocalypse Road. Oh, I forgot about that one. That's the new troll. You just told his real name. Now everyone knows who the new troll is. Oh, no. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I assume that's his name. Well, it's new troll right <laughs> new now. New troll's time. like, oh, no. I'm out. Man, I've been outed. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm only looking at the name names, not your sign-on names. Stephen Ekman said, hard to choose between the crew. Yes. And High Rise. Ooh, very different games. Yes. I agree. Nice. Yeah, High Rise looks interesting. Yeah, me. I agree. Tommy, 18 Chesapeake, no surprise there. And Warp's Edge. Warp's Edge. No you... clue. Oh, you have to tell us about that one, Tommy. Julian, ooh, what is this? Cosmopolit? I don't know what... Ooh, is Julian, that... what is this? Is this is that... only in Japan? Oh, no, he, don't tell he, me that. Is he online right now? I don't know. If you're on, Julian, you got to tell what us about it. What is this? I want to know. Cosmopolit. Cooperative kitchen work... Serving clients from all over the world. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's a group game. No wonder we haven't. Oh my gosh. I haven't even heard of this game. It's six minutes long. Oh my gosh. That sounds amazing. Okay. Wow. That sounds hilarious. Real time cooperative party game. That sounds interesting. <laughs> okay. Hunter's like, I'm out. No, I'm just kidding. You, you like the party game cooperative stuff. I'll play right? party games. That sounds hilarious. Oh my gosh. Julian, you're going to you're gonna have to teach us about <laughs> that one. Charles said, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh man. Let's see. Dune Imperium, David. Yeah, I agree. That's a good Oh, it's a solo like... uh, bag building game. Warp Sedge. Never oh, heard of it. Oh, interesting. Okay. Never heard of it. Interesting. I see. I missed somebody. Had Everyone, everyone's Tommy loving Miller. on that pinball game. Oh yeah. That's a it's a roll and write. Oh okay. I be, I like those. I don't mind. Tommy Miller says oceans. Oh that's another one. Yeah. Super there, skill pinball and title blades. Sweet. So oceans is is one of my new almost bought seventeen Seven times. Seventeen times. Haven't done but the thing is, it looks amazing. It looks fun. It looks great. But the main driver of our evolution plane was Nessa. Yeah, and she's not really playing board right games now. right now, so I, I haven't. You're bought. like waiting. Yeah, I'm surprised she likes that game anyway. It's so cutthroat. I know. It's amazing to me that she likes that. Yeah. I think the video games are making her bloodthirsty. Or I something. guess. I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I no, think she's that's really like that it, game. folks. So good one, stuff. I'm excited about one little about these housekeeping. Games. Well, a couple of housekeeping notes. So this this is our Ooh, list as of does. today, Ooh, January twelfth, to whatever today is. Yes. We're gonna, we always do a revised list in I June, so it gives us more time to play uh, some games. Although mm -hmm. I think we played nearly all the games we want to play. There's a handful of games that we haven't played that I want to play. Um, so. Well, there's some. Uh, there's a bunch. Sadly, there's a bunch that I want to play, like con game wise. Like maybe not buy, but want to try right, right, right. games. <sighs> but if you haven't heard. Rebecca's top 100 is going on. It is? Yes. What? So just, you should watch it. Just posted today was 90 to 81. We're going to, they're coming out every Tuesday and Thursday, hopefully. Hopefully. And then on the back end, on the back end, we're going to have a live top 10, her top 10 of all time live. That's and right. We'll do, we'll do a live after party as well. Next week, we're back to our variety show. So we haven't done a variety show in several weeks. We we'll should have some games to talk about, I think, maybe. Although we mostly played Pandemic Legacy, and I don't know how much we can talk about that. But um, next week, the live variety show. 
And I know what no clue what the top ten is going to be after that. <laughs> well, maybe you should put it to you know our judges. Our we may I may have a too. look for the guild. Well, maybe I'll do a votey bit yeah. on uh, which top ten we do next. Yeah. Top ten animals. <laughs> oh, no. Animal games. I'm totally trolling that list if we do it. I'm just going <laughs> to tell you right now. If that happens, it's on. It's a, a, and as a, a list. as an aside, as an aside, as an aside, as an aside. <laughs> Uh, the Dice Tower Kickstarter started today, oh, yeah. That's so right. if you uh, love the Dice Tower and you haven't heard, their Kickstarter That's started true. today, so go out there and support them, because we wouldn't be here without them. That's true. Thanks, and, boss. In many, I mean, in many ways, all this, all these games, I they, blame, they got us hooked on us. I blame fault. Tom Vassell for all these games. I blame Z. I'm Tom Vassell. Z's my second favorite. I'm just kidding. When I started watching Z's Dice Tower, Z was, uh, <laughs> was only a twinkle in Tom's eye. <laughs> I can't believe you said it like that. I'm so scarred. I'm so scarred. Oh, why? <laughs> uh, I can't even. <laughs> what just happened? Oh, my God. Oh, okay. I'm already up at 177. That's awesome. I'm so I'm, I'm Man. happy for those guys. So. Man, okay. Yeah, keep Z out of trouble. I mean, keep him in. No. <laughs> Yeah, kind of. Yeah, he's, he's All right, kind of. let's get out of here. So we'll, <laughs> Y'all take care. We'll see you next Tuesday. All right. For the shenanigans. Bye.